My goodness, this is a lot bigger when it's on a table. So this video is long overdue. This is my Hackintosh that I built like two months ago at this point. Uh, I was really just trying to wait till I get like matching components, make it look good for YouTube. But to be honest, I'm satisfied, I'm happy, and I don't really care about aesthetics internally really. I just want my computer to work and perform fine. So first I wanna talk about the why of why I built this machine because there's there's a story behind everything and a reason of why I have this computer. And then I'll get into the components later because I mean, the components are gonna be down in the description anyway. So I originally started this channel with this iPhone 6S and I was recording in 1080p. It was doing really good for the most part. I had no problems with it. Um, and then I would edit everything on this MacBook Pro um, 2012 in iMovie, and it was great. And then I started to record in 4K and 1080p still on my personal phone using the iPhone 10, and I would still edit everything on the MacBook Pro 2012. 4K was a bit of a struggle, but we'll get into that later. So then the new MacBooks came out, and I started editing on those machines. I was like, wow, this... MacBook Pro 2012 is, uh, it's pretty old. It got into my brain like, huh, this laptop is like $1,300 and then the higher end one is like $1,800 and then the 16 inch was like $2,000. I was like, man, that's a lot of money for these components and this computer. But they're all great machines in their own right because you know, portability is something that's really good. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try to build a Hackintosh. And by build, I meant improve my old PC to be a much more powerful, I guess, content creation PC. So first I did a Hackintosh with my original build, which was the 4790K DDR3 RAM. Everything else was pretty much the same. And what happened was when I was doing video editing in 4K, it wasn't that smooth. It was actually a pretty horrible experience. So I was like, you know what? I can't wait on Zen 3 anymore. I just have to buy what is out right now because when Zen 3 comes out, oh well. I just need a computer that can handle what I needed to do. So I went to Micro Center and they had some pretty good deals before COVID hit and things started going out of stock. Um, so I got the R9 3900X, which is I believe a 12 core, 24 thread processor. I already bought the 5700 XT at launch. Um, and I will say I've experimented with a lot of components. I had RGB RAM. I thought it was cool for like the first two minutes. And I was like, I'd rather just save $10 and get higher clocked RAM. And then I had the regular fan on here. This computer isn't even on. Wow. I had the regular CPU fan by AMD. That fan was so bright, colorful. It was beautiful, but it was just too loud for me. So I decided to go with this. I believe it's the... NHU-12S case fan by Noctua, it's it's really good. Um, these case fans in the front, they're RGB. I kind of wish they weren't because now I guess my RGB craze is over after that first experience I had with the RAM. Um, but it's the case fans, I'm just gonna leave them in there. It's whatever. I am I might end up upgrading to 140 millimeter fans in the front, two of them. I have a regular fan in the back. Um, no fans up top. I had Corsair red LED fans. I took those out because I was like, I don't want any crazy lighting anymore. I just want my computer to be good and quiet. That's all I want. I don't really care about colors. So I've been cycling through that. I also cycled through a couple of storage options. Originally, I had PCIe 4 storage. I was like, oh, wow, this is great, super fast. But I'd rather have a terabyte of SSD storage, M.2, um, for the same price. So I ended up getting two M.2 one terabyte SSD drives. And one is for Windows and one is for Mac OS. As you can see down here, I also upgraded my power supply from I think like 550 to 650, just because I am using, I guess, a more powerful CPU than the i7-4790K. Um, all my regular storage options are still there. So I have two regular SATA 3 SSDs and then two one terabyte hard drives. And for the most part, I also didn't want to post my Hackintosh video too fast because I wanted to test out stability. And so far this thing has been super stable. I haven't had any sort of crashes. The performance has been, I'll get into that later. The performance has been pretty good for the most part. 
Um, one more thing I have to add is I got the Fenvy T9 919 or 919. It's, it's a whole bunch of one and nines. I can't remember. I'll have it somewhere on the screen. Um, it's a native card by Apple, not by Apple, but it's a native card and it's able to recognize magic. Ooh. It's able to recognize magic ac accessories at boot up. So that's really nice. So with the money that I put into this machine, I mean, all together, it's around like just under $2,000. That's including the magic keyboard, which is 150. And then the magic trackpad, which is also 150. I got space gray because I was like, man, I'm saving so much money. I might as well. I know I'm really big on value, but the money that I was saving, I was like, I got, I got to get space gray. So um, if I didn't get space gray, this thing would probably be around $1,800, maybe even less. It'd be the same price as the high-end MacBook Pro 13 inch. So I feel like the value I got out this laptop, <laughs> I think the value that I got out this computer that I built is much better than whatever I could have bought from Apple at this price point. So in terms of performance on Geekbench, um, I believe I scored at the very top of the single core performance. So pretty much no Mac can touch this in terms of single core performance. But when it came to multi-core, I was still really up there, but I was somewhere between like a upgraded Mac Pro and an iMac Pro. And those machines, if you look online, those things are like $5,000 minimum. So there's no way I am buying one of those machines. Um, the good thing with the iMac Pro though, it does come with a 5K display, but I do think since I have like $3,000 extra to spend, I can probably invest in a really good 6K display. Actually, I can't even buy the HDR or XDR display that Apple has, that's 6K. Wow, that's really expensive. Like I said before, I wanted to get this all pretty for YouTube, but I mean, this computer is under my desk 99.99% .99 of the time, so I don't really care how it looks. So you guys just get to see what it looks like all the time. You don't wanna see the back. I'm horrible at cable management, but everything works and that's all I really care about. Um, it's not like I'm showing this off to a client. Oh wow, I'm showing this off to all my viewers, so I guess. But I'm not selling it to anyone, so it's mine. Um, but in terms of video editing, I know that there's a lot of debate whether you should go Intel or AMD. And the reason why I went AMD, even though with Intel you are getting a better, I guess, Mac OS experience as well as better video editing um, performance because of the Intel, something with the codec or just the, I can't remember right now, but I just know with Intel in terms of video editing, it does perform much better. It's just the price of Intel processors at the time was just way too expensive. And this was also my personal rig. It's not just my video editing machine. So I just video edit in Mac OS and then everything else I do on Windows. So for the most part, in terms of value, I saw the 3900X as one of, one of probably one of the best options I can get at the time. And it is a improvement of my old PC. So I was okay spending that much money on the processor because I already have the GPU, like I said before. And I'm not the type of person who would like to upgrade constantly all the time. So that's another reason why I went with the 3900X because I don't want to upgrade this computer for a very long time. And I do think with the 3900X, I'm going to have this computer running for a very long time. I've probably said very long time too many times. So um, what else do I need to talk about? Let me look at my notes. Oh, yes. So one of the major downsides with video editing on a Hackintosh versus like a laptop or the Mac Pro is I don't have the T2 chip. So in terms of security, I know the T2 chip is good in that, but it also serves as an offset of handling some video compression, I think. I can't remember, but I, I just know that it does help um, not a tremendous amount, but it does help a decent portion with um, video editing with that T2 chip. So I don't have that. I also don't have um, Touch ID, which sucks. So I have to log in with my computer, typing my password, which is whatever. It does work with the 
Apple Watch to unlock it, but I don't have an Apple Watch because they're too expensive to me. So another thing I want to say is I'm going to stay on Catalina on my version. I think I'm on 10.15.5. I am staying on that version as long as possible. I don't care. I mean, I do care a little bit. Big Sur looks very good, but in terms of stability, that is my top priority. So Catalina does everything for me. I'm having no complaints at all. I'm sure a lot of people are using Catalina with this Hackintosh, or I think Mojave as well. Um, so there's a lot of support. So if there are bugs that happens, it's a lot easier to fix since there's a lot of people using this versus when it updates the Big Sur, you have to deal with Apple's own bugs and fixes that they're gonna be pushing out with your own Hackintosh. So I'm just gonna stay on Catalina as long as possible. Um, so do I recommend everybody build a Hackintosh if you have the money? No, because I do think there is some value of buying Apple products by Apple. And that's one of the major thing is, is the support that you get as well as you don't have to worry about any potential bugs or glitches that are going to happen. Um, you also don't have to worry about building your own computer as well. You don't have to worry about the whole process. I have a whole documentary of um, doing everything I needed to build this computer to have it to run. It was three days, four days, three days. I can't even remember. It was it's all a blur at this point. But um, I don't recommend everyone do this. But if you are a person who's you know confident in building computers, you're able to follow a guide. Um, I mean, try it out if you really want macOS. If you really want macOS, and not like a fully functioning macOS, like there might be some compromises you have to make. Um, just make sure you do your research beforehand. Like I said, read the guide. Um, but I think it's something that everybody can do, but I don't think it's what everyone should do, if that makes sense. So um, I'm happy with this machine. I love it. I can airdrop, airplay, video edit perfectly fine in 4k also i want to say none of these products are sponsored by a company i bought this all with my personal money um, not even youtube money can cover this so um, this is a very personal machine for me um, i'm very happy with it um, no complaints at all i'm probably going to take out the rgb in the front like i said because kind of over the whole rgb phase it wasn't even a phase i didn't even like rgb to begin with but um, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video if you have any questions on the hackintosh um, I might be able to answer them. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more tech content. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. And as always, guys, much love. This is my Hackintosh that I built almost like two months ago. Um, the reason why it's taking so long is, oh my goodness, this is about to fall. Hold on, hold on, hold on.